Well, it's time now for a look at the day's top business stories. And for that, I'm joined here in the studio by France 24's Brian Quinn. Brian, you're starting with the long-awaited decision from the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. Aaron, America's central bank fulfilled expectations Wednesday with its decision to hike the benchmark overnight uh, lending rate by half a percent. Now, that brings the uh, federal funds rate to between three quarters of a percent and one full percent. It's the biggest single rate hike in the past 22 years. Normally, the Fed moves in quarter percent intervals. It's part of an ongoing battle to rein in U.S. inflation currently running at a four decade high. Low interest rates make it cheaper to borrow. That spurs business investments and consumer spending. During the coronavirus pandemic, the Fed slashed rates to near zero in a bid to prop up the U.S. economy amid lockdowns and market sell-offs. It now has the opposite problem, prices rising quickly as demand outpaces the capacity of struggling supply chains. March saw consumer prices at 8.5% higher than they were a year earlier, with core inflation, which excludes food and fuel prices, at 5%. The Fed's target rate for inflation is 2%. Here's Fed Chief Jay Powell in Washington on Wednesday. Inflation is much too high, and we understand the hardship it is causing and we're moving expeditiously to bring it back down. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. The economy and the country have been through a lot over the past two years and have proved resilient. It is essential that we bring inflation down if we are to have a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. Well, the Fed is facing the delicate task of slowing price and wage growth without sending the economy into a recession. Another element of the bank's economic support program during the pandemic was what's known as quantitative easing. That is essentially the printing of vast sums of money, which is used to purchase bonds from both the government and private business in order to inject liquidity into the economy. In doing so, the Fed has built up a balance sheet worth nearly $9 trillion. It's now looking to start winding down those positions. Starting in June, the bank will begin selling $47.5 billion worth of assets per month. By September, it will be offloading $95 billion a month. Analysts expect the Fed to reduce its balance sheet by around $3 trillion over the next three years. Earlier, France 24 spoke to Thomas Kosterig, senior economist at Pictet Wealth Management, about that plan. Just a massive balance sheet. The Fed has been very aggressive in buying treasuries uh, during COVID. So there's been a massive injection of liquidity. And the, the, I, I will say this, the Fed is only going to slowly remove uh, this liquidity. I would say the balance sheet is the area where the Fed is the most cautious on. They are much more aggressive on rate hikes. Equities markets had largely priced in that half percent rate hike. Analysts, though, were watching closely for signals that the Fed would be continuing with aggressive rate hikes over the course of the year. Jay Powell's remarks, though, widely seen as less hawkish than expected, with Wall Street rallying in relief to post its third straight day of gains after a sharp sell-off last week. Investors appearing to bet that the Fed can indeed tame inflation without causing a recession. All major U.S. indexes closing higher by roughly 3%. Over on Asian markets, Chinese exchanges got back to work after a holiday gaining ground, despite new data showing the country's services sector shrinking in April. Tech shares on the rise in Hong Kong as the U.S. prepares to delist some of them from American markets. Well, finally, for business, the U.S. isn't alone in facing high inflation. Here in France, consumer prices were 5.4 percent higher this April than they were a year earlier. Despite government efforts to help households and businesses, many French consumers are struggling to keep up. Joseph Keane has more. Inflation is on display in French supermarkets. Over the past year, the price of pasta has gone up by more than 15 percent whilst flour has risen by more than 10% and mustard by more than 9 Customers have had no choice but to find ways to save. Chicken's sometimes a bit cheaper than ham, so we're prioritising buying chicken instead. These are now 3 49 per kilo, but with the price rise and inflation, I can't afford it. Food prices were more than 3% higher in April than a year earlier, the highest pace of inflation in 11 years. Analysts say this is a trend that's set to continue.
3%. This is just the first stage. It hasn't even taken into account the impact of the war in Ukraine. We're heading into the second stage, which could hit 5 or 6%. Customers at this DIY shop are also feeling the crunch. I've been looking for some lengths of aluminium and lately I noticed the price has really gone up on these materials. In this shop, the price of wheelbarrows has jumped 22 percent and concrete slabs are striking 83 percent. Despite aid from the French government, many households and businesses are bracing for more price shocks to come. Stock up on those concrete slabs now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before they get out of hand. Yeah. But the supermarket is expensive, I've noticed that. So the prices are going up. I can feel it, yeah. I did find some sunflower flower oil, though. Ooh, so like yeah. short supply <laughs> these days. Lucky you. Thanks, Ryan Quinn with business.